Hi everybody and welcome to Rock and Recovery. We are here today with Sheriff Todd Baxter. How are you doing? Yes. Good. It's good to be here. It's good to be here finally. Thanks for coming yeah, on the absolutely show. I appreciate the invite. Yeah. So we are very pleased that you're here. And we were hoping you could tell us a little bit about um, the Heroin Task Force. Sure. Uh, well, the Heroin Task Force really started with a brainchild of, of Sandra Dorley, the DA. Uh, back uh, late last year, she was, she was contemplating getting better intelligence and better data in a more timely manner. I mean, we're all screaming for, you know, the numbers, right? The numbers, the numbers, and right. they're coming out in September of the year prior, and we know that's worth this information if you're gonna do any strategy around it. So, um, and then when I came into office, I decided I was gonna surge our narcotics teams and add extra manpower and go into the opioid fight from that front from the law enforcement. So, we literally sat down together and said, how do we put these two things together? You, uh, and we came up with this concept of the heroin task force. It was really, you know, I like to give credit where credit is due. It was really Sandra Darley was, you know, before I even came in office in January 1, was moving forward with the idea that we got to do more. We got to do something different. This is not working uh, as the numbers are spiking. So uh, what it is, is it's a collaboration of uh, law enforcement. Every law enforcement agency in Monroe County now submits a, a, an information sheet. It's a really simple form to fill out at every overdose they go to, uh, whether it's fatal or not fatal. Uh, that's sent to the Crime Analysis Center every morning. That, that information is being analyzed. And by 9 o'clock, I have those folks that I, I mentioned that are surging this thing uh, in a room, and, and they look at that intelligence from the last 24 hours and are able to react to that, you know, whether it's a law enforcement mode or an education mode. Uh, the other part of that is, you know, then Sandra Dorley's taking the, the, the prosecution of these cases to a whole new level. You know, an overdose with a death last year was, was really simply an incident report. Uh, the, the person would go one way or the other, depending if it was a death or not. They go to the hospital and the medical examiner, and, and uh, that's really all we did. We didn't do much more. Well, now we're treating every overdose as a homicide scene, if you will, at least trying to gather as much information as possible, like a crime scene. And uh, the DA has been very successful in prosecuting those cases. She's got eight so far this year, either convictions or um, indictments uh, for criminal negligent homicide. And, mm -hmm. and so, you know, that's part of the task force. You know, we're going to go with these totally different. And then, of course, the education piece with Mike Favada, who's been on your show, mm -hmm. uh, getting out there as deep into the community as possible and educating people that are not engaged, uh, that this is a real epidemic that we're facing. And, and then also his other job is, as I say, kidnap people. He goes out and grabs people that are in distress <laughs> or answers uh, social media blasts from a mom saying, oh, my son's in the house, the house. I can't get him out. Mike's been very successful going over and getting those people out of houses and hopefully somewhere positive in their life to move forward to their recovery. So it's really all that put together, you know. Wow, that's amazing. And um, what I love about, um, you know, the website mm -hmm. that, the, that has to do with the Heroin Task Force is that it gives you um, numbers that are pretty current, I right. mean, up to the last month, yeah. right? So there were over a thousand overdoses so far this, this year, year yeah. in Monroe County. Now, that is just the overdoses that you guys see in law enforcement. Mm -hmm. That doesn't include somebody that maybe overdoses and are brought back with Narcan by a parent or sure. goes directly to the hospital, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, those are, and those are, if you will, they're, they're consistent data because we're doing the same reports and, and all law enforcement is untrained and the information is going to the same database every day, right? Within 24 hours, we have that data captured. Uh, but that's not official data. We always we always preface that, you know, we, we don't write the number of deaths. The medical examiner is going to write the official number of deaths. You know, that's their job. Mm -hmm. uh, but we are tracking what we believe are deaths, you know, that, that were OD related uh, every day. So it gives us a, a consistent snapshot of what's occurring in the community every day, every 24 hours we're seeing it. And then we, we report that back to the community every, every month. Uh, early in the month, we report the prior month. So everybody can see this, the picture. Mm -hmm. uh, the reality of what's going on out there. So I'm very cautious all the time to make sure they understand that's law enforcement data, that's not officials, you know, stamped by any Department of Health or anything, you know. Uh, we don't cl declare cause of death, as an example, the medical examiner does that. But obviously we're on scene and, and it's an apparent overdose and someone's dead, we, we're going to label that for our purposes as a death case and, and start investigating it that way, right? Uh, so it's, ex it, it's exciting to have current data, you know, at your fingertips, have information, cell phone information, packaging descriptions, uh, uh, information from a, a loved one that we're interviewing that knows the players and, and the whole scenario that caused this overdose. Uh, it, it's, it's really capturing that every day and that's the exciting part that we can react to that. Awesome. Uh -oh. Hey um, I just recently celebrated 25 years clean. Uh, congratulations. Um, in the 12 step awesome. program yeah. and I wanted to give you my coin. Oh, thank you okay. very much. That means so, a lot to me. Yeah. How cool is that? Just Thank to remember you. the hope of recovery. So. Yeah, put that on my desk. 
But it is possible. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. God bless you. You're welcome. Congratulations. <laughs> okay. And thanks, everybody, for watching. And we'll see you next time.